The Soviet Union's list of space firsts is long. Sputnik 1, the first artificial Earth satellite. Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman in space. Alexei Leonov, the first spacewalk. In the Cold War space race of the 1950s and 60s, Moscow beat the United States to the punch in almost every major category of space exploration, except one. As the world marks the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 and Neil Armstrong's small step, let's take a look back at the Soviet Union's efforts to land a man on the moon and what went wrong. In May 1961, in a speech before Congress, President John F. Kennedy set out a goal for the United States to land a man on the moon before the decade was out and to return him safely to Earth. Though never admitting it publicly, the Soviet Union took JFK's challenge to heart as well. In fact, the Soviet Union had already beaten the United States to the moon, if only with its series of Luna probes. Luna 1 performed the first flyby of the moon in January 1959. In September 1959, Luna 2 became the first man-made object to reach the moon when it crash-landed purposely in the Sea of Serenity. Luna 3 took the first photos of the dark side of the moon in October 1959. And in 1966, Luna 9 became the first man-made object to accomplish a soft landing on a celestial object, sending back the first close-up images of the lunar surface. But sending a probe was one thing. Building a rocket with enough thrust to send both men and a heavy lunar lander all the way to the moon was quite another. And that's where the troubles began for the Soviet Union. But first, let's take a peek at the Soviet lunar craft itself. It's pretty cool. The design was similar to the American model, a command module to orbit the moon and a separate lander to make the journey to the surface. In the Soviet design, only two passengers would make the journey, one man remaining in orbit while the other landed on the moon. Interestingly, the command module had no internal hatch connecting it to the lunar lander. The cosmonaut chosen to land on the moon would have had to have made a spacewalk just to get inside the lunar lander and then reverse the process while presumably carrying a big bag of moon rocks on the return journey. Tijolo. Like the United States Apollo program, which lost three astronauts in a terrible launch pad fire during training for Apollo 1 in 1967, the Soviet space program was also not without its fatalities. Soyuz 1 launched in April 1967 for its first manned test flight. In a tragic Soviet first, Cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov became the first human to die during spaceflight when the parachutes on his capsule failed to deploy during re-entry. But just like Apollo, the Soyuz program continued despite the tragedy. The next challenge for Moscow was how to build a rocket big enough to lift a 95,000 kilogram payload to the moon. The Soviets settled on the N-1 rocket at 105 meters, almost as tall as the American Saturn V, but with a radically different propulsion system. Instead of the five massive engines on the Saturn V, the N1 used 30 smaller but more efficient engines. There was just one problem, a complicated plumbing system that made getting fuel to those 30 engines so they could fire in sync rather, well, difficult. On February 21st, 1969, the first N1 test flight blasted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Soviet Kazakhstan and crashed 66 seconds later. The second N1 launch occurred on July 3rd, 1969. That rocket, packed to the gills with fuel, fell back to the launch pad nine seconds after launch, exploding with the force of a small nuclear bomb and obliterating the launch facility. And then, 17 days later, Neil Armstrong made his giant leap for mankind. The Cold War space race to the moon was over. The Americans had won. The Soviets didn't quit, however. They test launched the N-1 twice more in November 1971 and November 1972. Both rockets, again, failed spectacularly. Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev canceled what would have been the fifth N-1 launch in August 1974. The remaining N-1 rockets were quietly dismantled, their outer shells used as lowly storage sheds and hangars in an effort to hide the program's failure from the United States. It wasn't until the Glasnost era, under Mikhail Gorbachev, that the final truths about the N-1 program came to light. 
And in a final crazy twist, a secret stash of the N1's NK-33 engines were later discovered in a Russian warehouse. By the time the N1 program was abandoned, the flaws in that engine had been fixed, and the engines were sold to an American company for more than $1 million each. Their unique design helped launch American rockets into the skies.